Hello everybody! Today I'm going to show you how to make two tools that I found to be very useful when doing hand plane restoration. They are extremely simple but very effective. The materials that you're going to need are all right here. Some of the number 77 spray adhesive. I use 150 grit sandpaper. You can see some uh, box cutting blades and some hardwood. I've got walnut right there. The dimensions of that wood the top board is one inch by one eighth of an inch and the one on the bottom is an inch and a half by three eighths of an inch or you could go five sixteenths. But that's all the materials it's going to take. I'm going to use this material to make scrapers and sanding sticks. I'm going to make four scrapers out of the three eighths inch thick walnut. There's going to be two of them at two inches and two of them at four inches. And I'm also going to make four sanding sticks out of the one eighth inch walnut. I've got them all marked. They're going to be five and a quarter inches. And this is what they look like cut down to size. Sanding sticks on the left and scrapers on the right. The next thing you want to do is use a coping saw to cut some half inch notches in the end of your scrapers. After that we're going to bevel the ends where the blades go in. I've marked both sides at a half inch so I know where I want the bevel to stop. I could use a belt sander to do the bevel but that would be cheating this work on planes, so what better way than to do? So doing that bevel is not an exact science, you just got to nick it off a little bit. It allows, on the short ones, it gives you a place to grip it better, and it also allows you to get down into tight places a little better, not having an excess wood sticking out down near the box knife. And with the bevels done, the next thing I'm going to do is round off the corners. You use these in your hands a lot. You're going to feel it. So just nick, nick the corners off, round them over to whatever you think is desirable as far as the, the look and feel. My little scrapers get a lot of use. So I want to make sure that I don't have any sharp points anywhere on these things. It will end up with blisters. Nothing like a project that gives you an excuse to use your old planes. The next step was to use a medium grit sanding sponge. And just kind of smooth up all the pieces. No rounding over the corners on the sanding sticks. Everything's rounded on the scrapers. And then it's on to my high-tech paint booth for a coat of lacquer. I'm going to probably put about three coats on these things. And here's what they look like after six coats of spray lacquer. Pretty darn good. I even lacquered the uh, sanding sticks and there's a reason for that that we're going to get to. Oh. And I forgot to mention, I added a little special touch by putting the uh, Stanley Sweetheart decals on the scrapers. I mean, it does make them look really good. Those are from the mid-20s is when Stanley applied those to their tools. I figure I'm using the Stanley box knife blade, so why not? If you don't know where to get the decals after you decide you want to use them, I, I do have a video that I've done that shows how to apply the decals and I do sell them. So next thing you want to do is, is get your razors lined up with the slot centered. Try not to remove your fingers and press your scrapers down until the notch, they're seated all the way into the bottom of the notch. Once they're in if you decide you want to adjust the center, put them on something solid and tap them with a hammer because when you do the, the tight saw cut to hold that blade, see that one's just a little bit off center but that's good enough. I'm gonna, that's two done, I'm going to go ahead and finish the last two. There's a look at all four of the blades inserted. Next thing we want to do is get rid of that razor edge and put a burr on them. I do that with 150 grit paper glued to a piece of marble with a 77 spray adhesive. I put it down flat 90 degrees. It's, it's turned to one side from straight. I start taking it back and forth over my 150 grit. That's going to give me a burr on both edges. It's going to make a really effective scraper. That's about all it takes right there. 
And with all four scrapers done, it's time to move on and finish up the st sanding sticks. What I've done is I figured out how much of the paper it's going to take to wrap around the stick. I'm going to get uh, two pieces out of one length, and I'm going to go ahead and get the paper ready. And with the paper ready, I need to mist the back side with some number 77 spray adhesive. Then you're ready to wrap the paper around your sticks. I just line up the edge, stick it down, and fold it to where it's tight. That's it, one stick done, three more to go. And believe it or not, this plane broke down without uh, having to use any heat on anything. I would have never thought this one would came apart as easy as what it did. But clearly, lots of rust to deal with. And I got just the tool for doing it. I use the scrapers for all these flat parts that you see laying here. So you got the base, you got the lever cap, cap iron, iron, and frog. All the flat machine surfaces. The first step in cleaning them up when they're rusted like this is to scrape them. This base has got some really thick rust on it. You hold your scraper at an angle, just like what you see me doing right here. You're going to scrape that rust off. Just with that little bit right there, you can see some nice, smooth, patinaed metal. I'm going to do this without breaking away. A lot of times when I do my restorations, I don't show you this boring part. And I get people that want to see exactly how I do it. Well, this is it. Now, over time, you're going to lose the burr that's on the side of this. If you do, you flip it over and use the other side because you got two sides with a burr. Notice that I'm scraping with the direction of the machine marks. Apply a little bit more pressure to get some of this on the inside right here. Turn around and get this back corner. And you'll feel it smooth up. And the scraper will start to slide over like, like ice. You control it right. And you can keep the tina if you don't plan on lapping it. You want to keep an original aged look. And that one is scraped about as much as what you need to scrape. The before and after is already quite striking. Next I'm going to a piece of 150 grit on a rubber sanding block. And this is also going with the original machining marks. I'm not pressing hard. I'm letting the paper do the work and what I'm doing is try to even it out and maintain the patina that's on there. And you can go down as far as you want to go, it's a matter of personal preference. For this plane, I'm not, I'm not going to lap it. I want it to look aged and original, so I'm pretty happy with where I've got it right now. The next thing I'm going to do is hit it with some 3000 grit paper. One final smooth up before putting some wax on it. That's good enough. So in just a couple minutes worth of work, I've transformed a something that most people might have given up on into a nice looking at least one side of this base. Of course the rest of it still kind of looks like crap. So scrapers are a really nice tool. I could have gone on from here and lapped it and made it look like brand new 
but it isn't going to make it plain any better and having this patina gives it character and that's what a lot of people like and this is a good shot right here to show uh, just how nice that side is you can see the reflection of the scraper I'm going to show how to do these other pieces the cap iron, the iron, lever cap, and the frog, all of these in uh, separate videos. But while we've got the base out, you got some flat machine surface right here that the frog mounts onto. And there's also some up front where the iron touches the base. So just get your scraper in there. And I'm not pushing hard, I'm just letting the scraper do the work. Remove that rust. And I haven't had to touch up the burr on my scraper. But when you do, you touch it up the same way I showed you to initially take the sharp edge off of it. So I got in there, I scraped the rust off of the seat that the frog goes on. And I can also get it down in here with the iron. There's a machine surface right there at the very bottom edge that rust off and then that's where your wood sanding sticks come in handy now I can take my sanding stick on that machine surface buff it up just a little bit I'm skipping a whole bunch of steps where that I would normally go through if I was going to restore this I can take my sanding stick down inside the throat and get that little, little bit right there where the iron comes in contact with the base. And that's about all it takes. Dead, big old dead cockroach in there. Get that out. Now sometimes these quarter inch sanders will fit inside, the, or not quarter, but half, eighth of an inch will fit inside your throat. And the forward edge of that throat's got a flat surface right there. So I can go around the throat and clean that up also with my sanding stick. I don't want to mess with the edge that the iron's coming out of, just the forward edge. So those are cleaned up pretty good. I can also come into it here from the top side and do the same, same thing. So here's a little closer look at what I was able to do with the sanding stick. And then I've got a small brush that I used on it and that machine part right there is pretty much done except for some oil and then the part in the bottom of the throat I was talking about clean the rust out of there that didn't take but a matter of a couple minutes so anywhere that you've got flat machine metal surfaces you can transform it from this to this with a fair amount of ease and you can do that with your scraper and your sanding stick. So that's how you work magic with sanding sticks and scrapers. I hope there was something informational you could use in this video. I gotta look to see what's next. Probably another informational thing I'm thinking about doing the, all the other parts. People have been asking me to show how to do in a little more detail than I do in most of my videos. That's it for today. Time for supper. Bye.